Hi guys, this is Manuel for Antagma, and today I'm here with a quick tip about something a little different. I know Houdini is about simulating fluid simulations, vex and complicated stuff, uh, but um, actually when I did the switch from Cinema 4D, the hardest for me was to find my way around the viewport, selecting stuff, navigating, stuff like that. So that's why I compiled this quick tip for you, including what I found handy, and uh, maybe you find something interesting in here. Chances are that you know most of this, but um, it's just good to have it all in one place. So let's get started. What I have here is this scene, um, as you can see, uh, made up of different individual objects. You see them here in the network view. And um, the first thing is navigating. In Houdini, you usually navigate using the spacebar. And what the spacebar does is not, it's not being used as a shortcut for navigating, but instead it's switching to the view tool. And this is this tool here on the left. If I click this, I can navigate my scene without holding a modifier key. But if you're in a different mode, like for example, transform, then you can just um, press space to temporarily switch to the view tool. A different uh, possibility is to use alt, it does exactly the same thing. It switches to the uh, view tool. And I use the old navigation just because I use different 3D programs, Cinema 4D, 3D code, um, etc. And the old navigation is somehow a standard by now. So I press old and then left, middle, and right mouse click to navigate the viewport. One thing that is very, very handy whilst navigating, especially if you're working on selections and modeling um, around, is to be able to specify the point around which the viewport rotates. In programs such as 3D Code, here we are quickly in 3D Code, this is handled very efficiently because every time you click, you see this little gizmo here. It's very hard to see probably on the video, but um, this little axis here, that is projected from the view to the geometry every time I click, and this is the point around which I am rotating. That means if I want to rotate around this portion of the of the model, I can, and if I click here, I can rotate around the other side of the model. That's very handy, especially if you are zoomed in, because now I'm rotating around this point instead of a point way off my screen. In Houdini, unfortunately, this is not the case. If I rotate here, you see I'm rotating around the center of the view. But there is a shortcut I discovered recently, and that is Space Z. And Space Z does exactly what 3D Code or Cinema 4D do automatically. It projects the pivot of the viewport um, to the geometry under the cursor. So if I go in here, for example, and press space and Z, you see the view is recentered, and now I can rotate ab around exactly this point. So if I am modeling here, I have all the control. If I now pan to the other side, you see rotation is off because I have my pivot on the other side. I can press space Z again, and now I can rotate around this point. So this is really very handy. It emulates what Cinema 4D and 3D code do automatically, and it helps you finding your way around the viewport while modeling. If you want to go back, just press space and H for home, and it will show you everything and reset the pivot of the viewport to the middle of the screen, such that you are back in, in navigating as you were before the first time pressing base Z. Now let's look at selections. Um, uh, to do selections, you use the select arrow here. You can invoke it by pressing S, and then you specify what to select. Um, these shortcuts are the number keys, one, two, three, four, five. If you press one, you're in object mode, which is this mode here. And you see, if I'm now um, hovering my cursor over the geometry, the individual objects get highlighted. If I click, I select an object. You see, this object is selected. I can select another object. Now, if I want to alter this object, what I can do is I just press two for points and look what happens. It displays the points, but at the same time, the network context switches to inside the object because Houdini now assumes that you want to do something to the points. That means 
now I can select my point, for example, do something to it. And as soon as I press one again, I'm back in object selection mode and the network view understand this and switches back too. That's very handy because this way you can very quickly select different objects, go to editing them and switch back to your overview mode. Now let's actually do something useful. Let's say I have here this C and say I want this component here. I press three for edges, uh, switch to edge mode, space and Z to center my view. And now I want to bevel this edge here. What I can do is I can click the edges, of course, individually, but that's a tedious process. If I click an edge and then hold shift, I can select more of them, as you can see. Let me switch to the camera because then I have uh, better clipping like so. What if I want to select the entire loop? What I can do to do this is I press the A key as indicated below here. And if I now press the middle mouse button, you can see that the whole loop is selected, which is good. Um, let me quickly switch the view again like so. Now, with this selection active in the viewport, what I can do is I can put down a bevel node. If I do this while my cursor is over the network view, the bevel node will just get laid down and I have to specify what to bevel. If I do the same thing, but here on the viewport, so press tab and on the viewpoint put in poly bevel, poly bevel, what happens is, as indicated by these green lines, that all the edges that are selected are automatically put into the group field here of the poly bevel. And that is very handy because um, this way you don't have to specify them by hand. Now you can just go up here and increase the bevel, maybe give it more subdivisions like so and change this bevel to round. Now we have a very nice bevel here around this object. As you can see, um, what Houdini does is it specifies the edges and points and uh, primitives too, just by numbered lists. So what um, happens here is it puts a P, um, that means edge, and then it lists all the points that make up the edge. You see, that's very good. So a very powerful feature of Houdini and very, very handy is that you can change these selections after the fact. So what if I decide that I don't want to bevel this edge, um, but I already did the beveling operation on all the edges. What I can do now is I can go and select the node. And then there is an operation called reselect for current tool. This operation is under the right click menu that you get if you click on the on this arrow here. You have reselect for current tool. So basically what this does is if I click it, you can reselect for the current tool by, for example, excluding these two edges and then pressing enter. And you see, as soon as you do that, these edges are excluded now and the selection of the tool has changed. This is a very, very handy behavior too. By the way, you can achieve the exactly same thing if you go here to this group field and click on this white arrow right next to the field. As soon as you click here, it's exactly the same function. I can exclude another edge, press enter, and this edge is excluded too. What's very important to mention, and that's something that drives people crazy if they don't know it, to for, for a reselect for current tool to work, you have to be on the gizmo here. So this has to be selected for this function to work. If you are in select mode, so the arrow is active, and you select the poly bevel and then reselect for current tool, it won't do nothing. So it just does not work. So please make sure if you want to use this function to first click this gizmo mode here, it's called handle mode in Houdini. And if you now invoke the tool from here or from there, it will work. Now I can add these edges back into the selection, press enter over the viewport, of course, and I have them back. Okay, that was pretty much it. Um, one last thing that is handy too. What you can do if you are in select mode is um, you will find this neat button here. And if you click this, you get this list. And this list lists all your groups 
Well, at the moment, I don't have groups. But um, normally, you have all the groups you have here, and you can select them by clicking on them. But that's not the only function of this panel. You can go to this gear icon, and then you can, for example, specify 3D connectivity. And now you see all your geometric islands, so basically connected components. And um, if this would not be um, separate objects, but one single geometry, this is very handy for selecting individual parts and um, editing individual parts. If I now just click on Island 1, it selects the whole island. Well, at the moment I have only one island here, so it's not that handy, but um, you get the point. And uh, it can do the same for UV connectivity and edge cut connectivity. So a very handy thing to know too. And um, this little tips was it for today. Um, I hope there was one thing at least in there that you did not know. I discovered all this stuff um, just recently and I feel much more at home now in Houdini now that I find my way around the viewport. Thanks so much and uh, hear you soon.